as introduced by Aristide, uh, I'm working in a uh, perspective and I'm not Elsa. Uh, she <laughs> invited me to re replace her, considering that it would be a more strategic operational talk. So the idea is how can uh, urban metabolism principles inform and uh, structure planning policies in Brussels? That will be really the goal. I'll speak a bit what is perspective, what is the action of perspective, and which tools are we using and how are they modified by the principles of urban metabolism. So, perspective is a planning, spatial planning agency, a regional spatial planning agency, which operates at the regional scale and also at the local scale. At the regional scale, there's the Strate PRD, Strategic Regional Plan, which is indicative and integrates all the policies of the Brussels regions, all the uh, obligations stemming from international treaties, uh, European policies, national, into a strategic plan. Also, sustainability objectives, the economic development objectives, all that related to the special organization of the region. So that's the strategic regional plan. It's indicative. General and sectorial objectives are uh, declined into land use applications. And the strategic regional plan also defines sites which are of strategic value for intervention, more local sites. We also have the PRAS, which is a regulatory land use plan. So that's mandatory. It defines the land use and of course it sub subscribes to the PRD orientations. And then at uh, Perspective we are also involved in local scale plans. So these are what we call the PAD. They are local plans. They subscribe to the PRD of course and define general special planning principles and they can be indicative or regulatory or both. And we also have a more operational aspect, CRUs, which are urban renewal contracts, which define a program of initiatives that are carried out uh, to renew the urban fabric, uh, social economic policies or projects, and also landscape related issues. So, and that's a bit what uh, Perspective is doing from the spatial planning aspect, because we are also statistics, we are also involved in statistics, we have a statistics institution and also a territorial knowledge uh, department. And I'm from the strategic department. Of course, you don't plan a city uh, all alone. And this is done in collaboration with a constellation of institution, uh, regional partners, uh, which are described here, but also with the stakeholders, which are very important, the Brussels region municipalities, the Flemish region, the Wallon region. Helmer already introduced a lot of the work that is done with the Flemish region. Uh, so I won't come back, but all these collaborations are absolutely crucial because nothing will happen without them. Of course, it's very important to have a political support to create policies and uh, organize, have special planning policies. And in this aspect, we are lucky that there is kind of a continuity. So the Brussels region policy statement of 2019 to 2024, in terms of economy, uh, is continued the goals that were defined before. So we are pretty comfortable about that. So in terms of economy, it's the development of a local offer of goods and services, creation of sustainable jobs in a low carbon economy. Nothing new, but good. Uh, also focus on circular social digital economy. The PRIC, so it's the regional uh, program for circular economy, urban agriculture, preservation of the industrial and economic activity, meeting local needs through an urban industry, local production and craftsmanship. So. Basically, we're continuing with the previous objectives, uh, which will be important for the what comes next. And I must say that political support is the basis for all of this. It won't happen without it. In terms of urban flows, we have uh, quite a few 
plans and programs. So there's the resource and waste management plan, which deals well with what it says. <laughs> Uh, there's also good food plan, which is more involved with uh, urban agriculture, consumption flows, uh, foods. And then we have the regional program for circular economy. I will only speak about the last one, but of course, all of these other plans and programs are important in terms of urban metabolism. So, the Brussels regional program for circular economy you probably already heard about this. It's really a program which tries to define what should be, uh, how should we achieve the transition from a classic linear economy to a circular economy, taking into account the characteristics of the Brussels territory. Uh, so it's, uh, as mentioned by Homer, a very entrepreneurial based program, sectorial based on the uh, industry uh, which are seen as important or having an impact like construction, logistics, wastes, resource management, food, retail business, because it's Brussels is a very administrative region. Uh, there is this sectorial aspect, there's a kind of roadmap with cross-sectorial measures which import education, uh, encouragement of innovation, public procurement, direct economic aids or indirect economic aids, um, which should lead to achieving these aspects. Uh, it must be said that government is also very important for this because there is a strong political support which tries to break this administration silo effect that uh, you are mentioning. Um, so several ministers working together, bringing administrations together along one strategy. But then all of this must be declined in a territory and that's where we actually fit in. So because all these measures must somehow be territorialized in the region and in these priority zones which have been defined. And that's where the thinking about our role in s spatial planning and uh, transition towards a circular economy and taking account urban flows really comes home. How can we achieve this? So uh, the, um, the Brussels Regional Program has defined 111 measures. We put them aside, but some of them are really involved into the territorialization of the economy, of the circular economy, and I've singled out a couple of them which are important at the regional scale, I think. So, one is territorializing the circular economy through the definition of hotspots. So, this is really, circular economy means that there are flows, but how these flows land on a territory is a difficult to a certain issue. So, the hotspots are a mean to try to trigger to this, uh, this thinking, really analyzing flows, seeing how they can land, where which infrastructures, as we have discussed this morning, are required, what e already exists and everything. So this is really what we are wanting to work on now and it's the most undefined part yet. And I'll speak about the North Quarter, which is one of our best examples. Then. We have to, this is very important, develop collaborations between the Brussels region and the metropolitan area by initiating or capitalizing on existing initiatives. This is what we we're talking, Elmer was mentioning. We absolutely need to create more collaborations. I mean, urban metabolic flows are about flows. They are not restricted to a small territorial area like Brussels. So for, we need to take into account the hinterland and really the global aspect of the issues. Uh, oh, and this little, so these are the name of the measures uh, in, the in the program. Territorial, TRE is for territorial. And then there's uh, TRE 2, so this is, which states that perspective will stimulate the offer of accessible spaces for development of circular economy projects in partnership with regional institutions to meet the needs of economic actors. That's 
well, you could say it's a very local aspect problem, but it's very systemic. So it's finding places for the within the whole region, and I think this is a very crucial element of the transition to the circular economy on a massive scale, because this is where we stand a bit now. Uh, this program has existed since 2016, and we are in 19. A lot of experimentation has been done. How can we upscale? How can we really enforce the transition? And also, there's long-term monitoring. So what is happening, actually? Oh, there's a bit of French. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because so, I was translating this yesterday, and uh, I obviously forgot to translate the uh, left this. So, the, uh, the issue is how to define a framework for the long-term monitoring of the circular economy. Taking into account uh, multiple scales, uh, local to metropolitan, uh, not only territorial scales, but also economic scales, micro, meso, macro, economic scales, uh, which stakeholders should be required to do the monitoring, uh, and which tools are needed to collect, manage, structure, visualize, the data feeding the monitor. So all these will be things that we need to develop. They, they don't exist, but uh, if we want to achieve this upscale, we need to develop them. So this is really where we stand in terms of regional scale approaches to urban metabolism in terms of spatial planning, because there's a lot of thinking uh, in the different sectorial approaches. That's OK, it's mature. But how do we apply into the spatial considerations? It's still very embryonic. That's what you can see. Now, at the local scale, the picture is a bit different. So we have been developing tools. And when I say we, it's not only perspective. It's Brussels environment and all these regional institutions, and not only regional institutions. Tools in order to really integrate uh, circular economy and metabolism principles into spatial planning. So these are covered by these measures. So TR3 is integrate circular economy indicators to the B sustainable tool. So what is the B sustainable tool? It's basically a tool which was developed to help uh, create sustainable neighborhoods. So it's a, and not only, but it's it goes also to the finer scale, but that's basically the idea. And uh, of course, we wanted to inject principles of uh, circular economy, urban metabolism into this tool, which really uh, is a collection of tools. It's a, a charter, a policy making charter. It's uh, also a quick scan tool, which really, the idea is that this is not a mandatory tool. It's something which is voluntary, so users use them if they want. So it should bring quick benefits to them. So there's a quick scan which can help, uh, you know, to assay the environmental, uh, urban metabolic issues that are uh, actually raised by the project you are trying to carry. So, so you can simply do this. It's kind of bullet point. I think you can actually see here. This is the quick scan looks much less sexy, but uh, yeah, you have all kinds of subjects that you are asked questions about and you need to fill them and it gives you a kind of feedback of where you fit in the picture, uh, what can you, what could you improve, what are issues that you are not aware of that uh, could be worth considering and these are all the themes that are uh, touched upon, which are the classic themes of uh, sustainable development, urban metabolic flows, etc., etc. But uh, this is not simply a tool. It's there's also Compass, which is basically this, but uh, for, for real. It's a much more detailed, and uh, it's a bit of work to do it. So, But it, the idea is if you fill up this Excel sheet, uh, you get a very, very nuanced and detailed picture of uh, the situation of your project and the impact of your project. And of course, these tools, and this is documentation that actually helps you uh, and educates the project, uh, uh, how would you call, project leaders. 
But these tools are actually powered by people, uh, experts, uh, facilitators, which will interact with the users to provide uh, expertise. And the idea behind these tools, and of course, all the usage is iterative. So you go through several rows of this. The idea is to uh, inform the project managers of the, uh, the stakes, environmental, economic uh, stakes that their project will raise. But also, it's a way for the region to inject the regional policies into uh, local uh, initiatives. And the benefit for the users is that they get all the expertise. So they get a lot of expertise, which would be very hard for them to mobilize without this. And uh, the idea is to do it very early in the process. Uh, so actually at the, the diagnostic level. So that's right from the start and actually to really even help them uh, structure and scaffold their ambitions really. So because they, they have a project so they have some idea often of what they want to do but they can actually do a lot more. That's and uh, we can help them do a lot more. That's the idea behind this tool. So this is this measure, and uh, the first measure is develop pilot projects to anchor circular economy at local level by involving local stakeholders, citizens, NGOs, etc. And I'll come back to that. Uh, so yeah, we have this. Oh, uh, I, it's missing. I'm talking about a test case, uh, the North Quarter, which is at an interesting intersection between uh, local uh, project, local plan, and uh, hotspot, it's a case of a hotspot. So there have been already quite a few workshops uh, happening about the uh, North Quarter, so by the circular metabolic community we had, and this was is from the circular uh, metabolic community. And this thinking has progressed. There's also a lot of uh, bottom-up initiatives which have been happening in the North Quarter. And uh, Perspective was also tasked to start a reflection on this territory. And we used the, the Be Sustainable tool. So this is the perimeter. And uh, so it's a very monofunctional uh, neighborhoods with lots of office space, a very uh, strong features like uh, uh, train station, um, a canal. We it's at really at the strategic point because there's a lot of harbor uh, amenities which are accessible. There's a lot of potential because the neighborhood is clearly going to change because it's monofunctional. Uh, it doesn't uh, meet requirements of today's use. So it's a good opportunity. Th what you see here is uh, the first use of the Be Sustainable tool. It's actu actually kind of a diagram which uh, graphically depicts stakes in what, is, what are the importance of the different themes for the definition of the program. So what, what is going to be important? So it's the first aerial view and the idea of while using the tool is to identify what are the resources on which conditions with which actors and which actions can be developed etc so these are all outputs that came from the be a sustainable tool trying to map the different actors what are kind of um, what can they bring at which scale really trying to identify the actors, also trying to identify uh, locations and what can they offer. So what is actually existing? What are locations that exist and are working already and which could be actually encouraged or increased uh, in terms of performance? What are potential places? So uh, empty office space uh, uh, or brownfields? 
and what is actually not there, what is missing also. So it's kind of inventorizing all these elements and then trying to make a scan through all types of uh, material flows to see what can be developed there, what is the potential. So these are in so that one can meet a potential offer to what is being asked by the market, basically, and try to beat those at the local level. And also being uh, primary candidates for a hotspot development, what, how can this spot really work for the entire uh, Brussels region in a systemic manner, and even out of the Brussels region. And so these are other diagrams. I'm not going to actually go into the northern quarter because that's not my interest. Really here is just for each different uh, sector, there was an analysis of what are the potentials, which clients uh, could be developed, which actions, how could, so for instance, this is for the waste and resources, distribution services, what uh, actions, support could be found, which actors, etc., etc. And this was done for all kinds, so for uh, urban agriculture, for, um, what is this? Oh, yeah, th so this is uh, recovery of uh, materials, second-hand use, etc. Uh, construction sector, what can be reclaimed, what can be reused, reconditioned, etc. And also taking into account uh, local initiatives, so this is from the private sector, a plan for uh, uh, mutualization of energy needs in the entire neighborhoods. So this was, for instance, from an initiative from Engie, which is actually present there. So how could one organize the different uh, blocks in terms of energy needs, et cetera, et cetera. So trying to mobilize all the energies. So, and basically this is where we are at in terms of use of that tool. It's really helping to, let's say, mobilize the, all the expertise that exists already in the region in a manner that can be uh, efficient and timely. And also mobilizing all the energies that are already there and can be really leveraged. There's another example that I would like to, to show you. This uh, Be Sustainable tool has been used in already several neighborhoods, uh, like uh, Heivart, um, and we'll, it's going to be used in the Maximilian neighborhoods. Uh, the idea is every time to identify what are the potentials, what should be the roadmaps to develop, integrate in a holistic manner all the environmental issues, uh, opportunities into a territory. But all these are from the point of view of a territorial entity. So here it's the region which is operating, but we also have uh, other actors which are not uh, territorial units. So this example is the public center for social welfare of the XL municipality. And they contacted uh, Perspective to help them uh, remodel their their, their city block they're occupying. And they have used this uh, Be Sustainable tool to identify what are the, the potential of the site, what are the big issues that are confronting the site, and translate that also into ambitions. So th this is what exists, what should be a pen, uh, paid attention to by the site, and this is what the social welfare center wants from the site. What are their priorities? So this has also been defined and informed. Uh, and from all of this, we are deriving uh, contract specifications that will be used to create a master plan and then the different projects that will be developed within the site. And so this is our, the modus operandi that we want really to develop is have tools mobilize the expertise to help the project holders 
to define their ambitions so that they then can carry them and in a manner that seamlessly integrates the, the objectives of the region in terms of special planning. One point that I would like to make is that this tool, which is totally voluntary, uh, but uh, is being picked up, should be uh, compared to the strategic environmental assessment tool, which is actually mandatory. And both of them are uh, decision support tools in spatial planning. And what is very clear is that the resources required to create, uh, to power the Be Sustainable tool are exactly the same for the strategic environment assessment tool. So it's the same, uh, or should be the same expertise. And in a sense, we are, the strategic environment assessment tool is mandatory by law. Uh, it was created to improve plans and programs designing and to create more transparency uh, in the public debate. And uh, it's a bit of a pity that it's not being more useful to actually shape policy. It's often seen as an obligation. It's also the doorway to attacking a plan and creating litigation. And it drives a lot of negative baggage. It's very heavy, uh, very administrative. And we are realizing that the Be Sustainable tool is basically the same thing, but uh, voluntary. So I think it's very clear that one should marry both, basically, uh, to modify the practices of the uh, strategic environment assessment tools so that it becomes more useful and more conductive to actually implementing the policies that we want to implement in terms of sustainability, circular economy, etc. And that's something we will be working on. Now, urban metabolism operationalization, this is from the first uh, territorial measure. So perspective and hub Brussels. Hub Brussels is really focusing on entrepreneurship and economic development, are formalizing collaborations on three aspects. So diagnostic purposes, be sustainable tool is a tool which I did not mention. I think it's a tool which is really useful in terms of diagnostic and in defining ambitions, but also provides a framework for evaluation. It's too soon to get to the evaluation part in real case studies because we're not there yet. And this is actually what the SEA should be doing. But uh, here we are more at the operational level. Still, in terms of diagnostic purposes, uh, there are collaborations to be done to identify st stakeholders. Uh, so who are the people who are the economic actors uh, already in existence or potential in a given territory? Uh, the management of offer and demand for productive spaces, I already mentioned that, and the creation of pilot projects in circular economy. So these were all measures that were listed in the Brussels program for circular economy. And so we are creating collaborations with Hub to, to make them real. And one program that I would like to highlight is this uh, Think, Innovate, Develop program. So it's a research action. The idea is to identify stakeholders, mobilize them, big citizens, private, public sector, academy, to, to identify what is the function or what is the positioning of a given territorial unit, uh, what is the potential that could be derived from this. This program, TEED program, was initially developed for, uh, for the commercial sector. So how is a given neighborhood position in terms of uh, commercial activities, almost like branding. But uh, we think that it could be really generalized for all kinds of uh, productive activities. So the idea is really to, uh, like um, we saw earlier, also creating interviews, storytelling creations, and 
how do the actors see themselves, how would they like to see the neighborhood, but then also to, to test new ideas for the territory, that's the part innovate, uh, and this is what the Brussels Regional Plan has been doing a lot, uh, uh, creating lots of innovations through uh, indirect help or direct help, but then organize the development of these projects among stakeholders and provide coordination support at larger scales. So this is the develop part, this is the upscaling. Like if we see that something is working, how can we help upscale it? How can we give this solution to others? Because uh, since we are regional, even though acting at a local uh, scale in this context, we, know, we learn about new solutions and then we can replicate them. How can we generalize them to replicate them across the whole region and further beyond? That's, that's the idea. Uh, yeah, and this is what I was explaining. Develop for the commercial sector. We would like to uh, uh, make it more general. And that's part of this collaboration with Hub. So, in terms of urban metabolism planning school, tool toolkit, uh, we are getting somewhere at the local planning level. We are, we are creating new tools or adapting existing tools, but uh, at the regional level, this remains a work in progress. I mean, I know that uh, Brussels is supposed to have a, like a regional metabolic uh, flow analysis, but and there are many things that should be done, but they're not there yet. So we will need them. So thank you. That's all for the moment.